Okay, thank, thank you, Jan. And um, firstly, thanks to the Shire and Richard Perry for supporting my visit to Hamilton to join in uh, the discussion and an exciting debate about the Australia Felix Museum of Art, Culture and History. And secondly, thanks to uh, Jackie and the other hardworking community supporters of this project for inviting me and organising the trip. It's been very smooth and enjoyable, so um, thank you very much. Um, when it was initially explained to me, uh, described to me this idea, I was, I was somewhat dubious about the merits of an of iconic um, institution in Hamilton. But as I've considered it more and more and I've prepared this presentation, I've become much more passionate <laughs> and, 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 and a supporter of the, of the idea. I think, I think it has great potential. Um, and I am a believer in art, art for art's sake, actually, um, and the civil, civilising role that the arts have um, in society, but I have been asked to take an economic perspective in this case, so I'm going to, to focus on, on the role that um, cultural development, cultural institutions, cultural activity has in, in economic development um, and, and the sort of role that a facility like that being proposed um, can have. So um, I wanted to just focus a little bit on a few, a few slides on uh, recent demographic and employment trends and just uh, sound a note of warning, I suppose, about the development trajectory that uh, Hamilton uh, may be on. Um, there's some population growth statistics and it shows that population growth is flat or falling in Hamilton. In fact, uh, between 2006 and 2011, Hamilton's population fell by about 1,300 people, which is about 253 a year. Um, and in fact, that accounted for all of the decline in uh, the Shire as a whole. So, um, so Hamilton's, uh, Hamilton's, the town's contribution uh, has, has been somewhat significant in terms of population decline in recent years. Um, the Shire uh, and, the, the, and Hamilton, the town, has an ageing population. Um, probably no surprise some of these ideas to most of you, but um, it, it is diverging from uh, regional Victoria as a whole. So in 2006, the median age of, of Hamilton was um, four years older than the median age of regional Victoria. Only five years later, it's six years um, uh, different from the med median age of regional Victoria. So. Uh, the ageing is occurring at an accelerating rate compared to regional Victoria in Hamilton. So um, you might say uh, uh, that there's a need for some youthful injection into the population. The other one here, this is employment um, and it's flat or slow in Hamilton, um, uh, healthier somewhat in the, in the local government area of the Southern Grampians, but it's been very strong in regional Victoria. That's the green line, uh, the... the, the the figure there and the, the, the other bars show a more flatter performance. So again, in comparison to regional Victoria, uh, Hamilton's um, employment performance has been uh, modest. And it's been recognised, I think, in some recent press, press coverage here uh, that in, in the population projections that have recently been released for Victoria, um, the projections are for a flatlining of the Shire's uh, population. So um, we've got a, a position where we've got statistics which show um, flatlining, if not stagnation, in, in Hamilton. Um, and so there is a need to think about diversifying the con economy and uh, strengthening it into the future. Um, and so a, a rich artistic and cultural life is a central component of people's lives and where they live, and it, contrib and it has great makes great contributions to... Um, the openness, tolerance and creativity of a community. So not all people in a community are necessarily gallery goers, but all of those surveys say that they're active in all sorts of other ways in the, in the cultural life of communities, whether it's performing music, whether it's in needlecraft, whether it's through knitting, whether it's in their kids' performances or whether it's their involvement in local choirs. <laughs> people are active in the, in the creative economy and, and, it's, and it's somewhat of a glue that binds community life. And so formalising that in a sort of economic development sense has been um, a, a key trend, if you like, in economic development. And so for some underperforming towns and cities, the growth of creative industries and workers is, seen, is often seen as a, as a solution. Firstly, because creative industries are growing uh, industries, 
Um, secondly, because of this binding factor, they contribute to the human capital, uh, the sense of inclusion that people have. Um, there's a relationship between creativity, cultural amenities and innovation. And you would have all heard about the idea that our economy is very much driven by knowledge uh, these days. Um, and the creative industries, uh, although they're a subset of the economy, they also drive a lot of what occurs in, as inputs to business and business development. So the creative sector is very important. And so creative, those people who dabble in the arts aren't, aren't, just, um, aren't just dabbling, they're actually creating economic wealth because they're also active in design professions, in architecture, in, in design, in graphic design, uh, in all sorts of other endeavours which feeds um, productivity. And the capacity to attract and re retain creative residents. So it's a way of offering, a healthy creative economy is a way of offering more opportunities to young people. So that's a reason for, to have a strong creative economy. Um, I wanted to turn to some case studies or some examples of economic development through cultural development, and some of these you'll be familiar with. Uh, I'm sure many of you have been to, to Mona um, in Hobart and uh, me too, I went about a year or so ago, um, and it's quite an experience. That's my partner and my children enjoying the boat over there with the sheep-like seats uh, that you can sit on. My little girl enjoying an apple uh, while she sat on those uh, chairs, and then uh, in the outdoor spaces, the, the cafe there with the bean bags, uh, my daughter taking the opportunity to have a little nap. Um, and uh, so, so we enjoyed that experience and we went out of our way, of course, to visit that facility when we were in Hobart. Um, and here's a little article uh, taken off the net about its um, economic contribution. A quarter of Hobart's visitors uh, went to Mona in this period that they looked at restaurants and other businesses having a major positive impact, particularly from an influx of interstaters, interstate visitors and um, adding to visitor stays, not only within Hobart, but of course, facilitating uh, their engagement with the rest of, of Tasmania. So um, a real economic driver. I mean, and, in, and it's like a spaceship's landed for, for Tasmania, isn't it? I mean, it's an extraordinary facility uh, and it's incredible uh, man who's, who's made this investment. Somewhat similarly, but of course, based around its architecture is the very famous Guggenheim by Frank Gehry in Bilbao. Um, and uh, I found an economic study on the, on the web which had looked at its economic impact. Don't need to go over all the stats ex except this, you can see these graphs you know, uh, showing important performance. So it's grown the economic output of the Basque country region by almost half a percent. It underpins about 6,000 jobs in the region. It's provided additional tax revenues which they've measured, measured to the Basque country treasuries and it's put out as the main reason for visitors going to Bilbao when people are surveyed. So um, eventually, uh, maybe AFMAC uh, and, the, and, and a new gallery here or a new facility here may be an icon with its own pulling power, but, I, but I'll go on to argue uh, before then, Hamilton needs to consider a range of parallel strategies to build a creative and cultural offer, a compelling offer, um, to, uh, to support the idea of something like this. It can't, do, it, it can't do a Bilbao or a Hobart really in the same way. It has to have a, a suite of attractions and ideas. So what are those sort of ideas? And I know you've had Marcus Westbury in a pr previous conversation, but Renew Newcastle is a, is a great initiative um, in, an, in, a, in a town where there's a lot of empty shops um, and Renew Newcastle has been established to find short and medium term uses for buildings in Newcastle CBD that are currently vacant, disused or, disused or awaiting redevelopment. The organisation finds artists, cultural projects and community groups to use and maintain these buildings until they become viable for redevelopment. So that's Renew Newcastle and I've been doing a lot of work in Newcastle on other projects and it's certainly, um, I don't know if, how many of you have been there, but that western end of Hunter Street, is a, it really was a sad uh, uh, part of the town and, and, and to see it being re revived in, in some ways by this initiative is terrific. Um, and then the other thing that they've done is they've taken over the, uh, part of the old David Jones building temporarily. They've established this thing called the Emporium, which um, it has a, an arcade of boutiques and galleries filled with Newcastle's creative talent. 
Um, so uh, that's a, like an incubator space and it's having now a commercial dimension to it. Similar to that, uh, and again, this is a great idea, um, had a, quite a bit of coverage in Sydney. Uh, there's, you might know the old brewery site at the, broad, at the central station end of Broadway. Uh, the CUB Broadway was being, site was being redeveloped. In the meantime, um, the developer made available a whole bunch of vacant warehouses on Kensington Street, which for some reason were called Queen Street Studios, um, and they were utilised by artists during the construction of a major infill of, of this major infill development, and they've become a hub for artist activity and events. And you know, the great thing about these things is they're such good ideas that, of course, uh, they create spin-offs. So. Uh, the original um, idea has had to move on because the site's being redeveloped, uh, but the, the, the um, idea is an ongoing concern and now it's called Brand X and they're identifying other sites around inner Sydney for creative uses. Um, another personal encounter with this one, um, you know, you open your Lonely Planet guide, where am I going to go when I'm driving through central Tasmania? Oh, look, this place has got a murals. Uh, it's a murals town. So, of course, you go out of your way to have a look at it and you, you end up spending money in the town and you have a fantastic time. And uh, this, it's, it's an absolutely terrific idea. And there's my snapshots of um, some of the murals, including in the park there, the actual entrance to the annual prize, uh, which is held uh, every year. So the park is the setting for the annual prize, but the whole town is the setting for the ongoing uh, murals. So um, it was a, a fantastic example of the sort of branding of a town, art-based brand, branding that a town can have. Um, and more recently, my mum and dad have, have just moved from Brisbane to Melbourne and they came down the Hume Highway and they spotted this was on at the Benalla and, of course, they went and, and visited it. And um, so uh, there's now the Benalla Nude, an annual art prize, and I think this was the first one um, and it's a pretty significant prize, and they thought it was a terrific exhibition. So again, the idea of uh, a show being a showcase for original art, and of course the, the uh, Archibald Prize in, in, in Sydney has been this for years. Every year, people turn out for some, sometimes pretty average art, frankly, um, but they turn up and they go very loyally to the to the gallery, and it's always packed, and everyone leaves it till the last minute, or whatever. But so it's a, it, and it always makes a splash in the paper. Um, so, but, so this idea is, is a great one as well, which I would suggest regional towns like Hamilton could do well to consider. <clears throat> so some of the economic impacts that are bandied around, Arts Victoria are starting to measure some of these things. Um, I won't go through all this in detail, but they are putting out the reports. They're on their website. Uh, they've identified that, you know, the arts contribute $11.4 billion of, of, annual, of, of Victoria's annual gross state product. There's 110,000 Victorian full-time equivalent jobs. Uh, you know, it's 3.1% it's of the state's employment. Employment growth in this sector is averaging 4.4% a year. So you get the idea in relation to the overall arts economy. And then there's reports like this economic impact of the Wangaratta Performing Arts Centre, uh, built in 2009, $8.5 million. Um, you know, the capital cost of the centre has been repaid from the additional economic activity in the town after only about uh, five years. So it's already been an investment which is generating return. And regional visitation's increased. Uh, there's additional employment. Um, for every dollar invested, there's a $1.8 return, etc. So um, just an, an, an idea of the sort of um, economic benefits and value that... Um, arts and cultural activities and facilities can have. But of course there are some challenges for Hamilton and you, you might, you'll, be, you'll be thinking, okay, how do we compare to some of these places? Well, one of the difficulties of course is the, is the distance from, uh, from Melbourne. Uh, there's, a, there's, what, there's my example of Bill Bow. Um, I, I looked on Wikipedia, it turns out within the Basque country region, which is sort of around that little hook leg between France and Spain there, there's actually three million people um, just in that little 100 kilometre different distance from, from Bilbao. So it's got a ready-made uh, domestic market um, already and you, you'll be familiar with the sort of distances and, and, um, and people uh, in the Hamilton region. Uh, even, even Hobart with a similar population to southwestern Victoria 
it gets roughly a million visitors a year, um, so it's got a, a, an instant uh, number of people on the doorstep. Now, that's not to, to, to write off the prospects by any means, um, but the point here is because Hamilton is more distant from the day trippers, in my opinion, the cultural offer needs to be deeper um, and there has to be a package of activities that taps into uh, the visitor needs, the visitor's desire for authenticity and cultural tourism can play a role. So as important as the actual building which may end up hosting the um, Australia Felix Museum is, it may not be able to, Hamilton may not be able to rely on, on, line, on it alone for a revival. Facilities and cultural infrastructure are just a subset of the elements which make up a true creative economy and I've been trying to make that point via the case studies. So, so what have we got here? Well, we've got the creative economy in the middle and all these different elements around it. Um, the, the cultural workers, actually people who produce art helps, um, you know, so that's recognising them as important people. Uh, the wider human and social capital that's, that's trained up through education, through colleges, um, an environment which is attractive, uh, the consumers of art themselves, uh, policy integration with other aspects of things which council and other government levels are doing, the way it's promoted and marketed, the sort of business networks that occur and not, not, not least the cultural facilities and infrastructure and the idea of, of, of incubators which actually are a, a place where art is created. So that's the sort of story that, which I think um, AFMAC needs to be understood within. So what's a, what's a possible package for Hamilton? <clears throat> um, this is maybe cruel, uh, but my fly-in audit of, uh, of, of, of the extent to which uh, some of these elements exist in Hamilton are that there's, got a, br there's a brilliant, authentic and original theme. Australia Felix is a winner, in my, in my opinion. Arts facility or icon, there's a great gallery already and there's a great idea about an extension of, of the gallery. Um, other infrastructure, college studios and incubators, I suspect is less deep on the ground, but I could be corrected. Creative resources, as I mentioned, every community has, uh, ha has its cultural and cre creative workers, but it's probably not something this community is necessarily recognised for in the same way that perhaps Castlemaine is or, North or Byron Bay or those other communities. External brand recognition, I don't think people are, uh, uh, associate Hamilton with a creative economy, a cultural economy, um, related or themed event, perhaps not, and the extent to which uh, Hamilton and the creative economy here is part of a visitor package, again, is probably not so much uh, a, a strong point. So there's a bit of work to be done if we are going to pursue this idea of a, of a package of, of cultural activities, assets, facilities, uh, within which a new institution or a, a, a bigger institution could exist. So, um, what sort of ideas are there? And, and I've, I've had a glance at a draft arts and cultural strategy and all of these things, uh, the, the, uh, a draft arts and cultural strategy which is being prepared by uh, the Shire and all of these things are in there. Um, these are the ones that I've, I've started to focus on. So, the authentic and original theme, Australia Felix, it's a winner. Arts facility or icon, the existing gallery and in time, uh, the new facility. Other infrastructure. So what could we do in this space? Well, the new, new, renew Newcastle experience is, uh, you know, a great one. So auditing spare council and private spaces, potentially making this available for low rent and artists in residence programs, prefer preferably in a cluster. Um, and, I, and I've got in mind not just a single artist who, artist in residence who's here, one, one of them who's here once a year. And it's actually this is about trying to create a real, a really vibrant place where there could be uh, artists in residence, but also other artists who are who, who are, are creating art. And you know there are a number of <coughs> fantastic iconic buildings, some of which looked empty to me around town, which uh, which could house such a. Uh, such a cluster of activity. And so, so you can see the multiple aspects of that. Um, it's about injecting youth into the community. It's about making, making art here. It's about potentially making a product which can be exhibited uh, in, a, in a gallery, etc. cetera. So uh, there's all these linkages which start emerge, emerging. So strengthening art in schools, in adult learning centres, that's, that's part of that idea of, of the other infrastructure. 
Creating creative resources, as I say, attracting an artist's residency program uh, with small associated grants. They've got to have somewhere to live, so sometimes that adds a level of complication, but they also exist on the smell of an oily rag often. I mean, the, the productivity you get from a small investment is extraordinary in the arts sector. Um, and I'm always uh, antagonistic to governments which take arts funding away because generally the productivity that you get out of that arts funding is very high. Um, so uh, facilitating social enterprises, wall design, local materials, food, which and, and tying all of this to the Australia Felix theme, so making it, making it conditional, if you like, on work which is related to this theme. So you're building a body of, of work around this idea. Um, displaying the products of this effort uh, um, with other entrants at an annual Australia Felix Prize at the gallery and associated lecturers, writers, ancillary program um, as part of this. External brand recognition, opportunity to build via an online presence. These artists, these people who have been involved become Ham Hamilton ambassadors and, in my opinion, quality always has to precede the branding. You know, let's not try to pretend that you can brand something that doesn't exist. So all of these other things are important in terms of uh, the branding effort. And then there's the visitor package and you're contextualising this in terms of the other tourism activities in the region, developing Hamilton as a node in the circuit um, and, you know, extending the way people interpret the region through mo mobile devices, which has been done more and more. So it's about this package, it's about building the momentum and there's so much potential that can be developed. So what might be the impact of a successful strategy? Um, well, I've, I've done a few numbers. Um, uh, the current visitors to Hamilton, according to the stats I can find, it's around about 72,000 a year. They're the ones staying, staying overnight. That's made up of pure tourists as well as some visiting friends and relatives and some business travel. Um, but it represents about 24% of what the Western Grampians region uh, gets, um, which is 20, 294,000. So over three quarters of the visitors to this region here don't actually visit Hamilton. Um, so there's a, a, a latent pool of people that can be drawn upon. Um, and the current domestic tourism expenditure in Hamilton rest estimated at around 12 million per year. And that may be a conservative estimate, um, but that's what the modelers in my office uh, told me. Uh, but when I looked at some other numbers, I thought that looked a bit thin. But anyway, uh, that's a, a working figure. If Hamilton was able to attract, say, 30% of the Western Grampians region visitors, up from 24%, this would represent another 16,000 visitors or about an increase of a quarter than the town currently receives. So we're not, we're not try trying to be too heroic here, but once you start trying to get, once you start attracting more of these regional visitors, you start making increments, quite significant increments in terms of the Hamilton performance. So their spending translates to about one and a half to two million gross value added or additional output per year in the town's economy. And that's equivalent to over, over 20 jobs in the town in the, in the immediate area. So that's just trying to capture some of the Western Grampians visitors. If you say, well, look, we're after a bit of the, uh, a little share of the visitors which go to uh, the Grampians region who don't currently come to Hamilton, we'll just go for 5% of those. If we get that, it's a 50% increase in the current visitation. Uh, to, the, to, the, to the town, additional output of around about 40, 4 million and an additional 50, 50 jobs. So we're not talking about anything super heroic in terms of, uh, ca of the capture of uh, regional visitation to make quite a, quite a difference. So that's the sort of scope of the direct and indirect impacts of additional visitation um, and, it's, and, it, and, and it's relatively modest when put in those terms, but the induced and intangible impacts are, of course, can be even higher. It encourages an improvement in local amenity. It encourages a good feeling about the town, greater investment by locals. It attracts newer and higher quality business. And there's a word of mouth effect, which is a compounding effect. So the cultural facility may not be sufficient. It needs to be part of this targeted achievable strategy and recognising also the links to economic development, a living city, recreation development, urban renewal, tourism, community education. So there's a bigger, uh, a pa bigger package beyond even just the creative and cultural strategy. And just the, the last slide, reiterating a few of the things that I've said about next steps. 
So let's, uh, an idea here is that this is a five step, three year plan, up for debate. Adopt the target for increasing the culture based visitation initially drawing from the existing regional visitors, but then of course targeting uh, Melbourne visitors, Adelaide visitors and uh, international visitors. Establishing this arts, arts incubator space idea after auditing spaces, establishing an artist in residence program, establishing an annual Australia Felix prize and establishing a small festival based around the awarding of that prize at the best time of the year for the area. And, aiming to achieve that over three years. And to me, that begins creating the momentum, the constituency, the community understanding, the community acceptability of the case for um, the Australia Felix Museum and other related initiatives. And I think one of the things Karen will focus on is the need for commu wide community support for your institution. And that's something which I'm arguing this sort of agenda would help build towards. Thanks. Thank